the batteries. Oh, yeah, you did it. <laughs> I've been doing it for years. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Interest week. Oh, yeah. You can call it that. Yeah. Tell me, Kathy. Yeah. You're way ahead of me. Ah, you're ahead of her. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> no competition there, right? That's the faith you sing things, but okay. you got it covered, right? Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm ready. Okay. Yeah, this <laughs> for the one, and then the other one where that's what this is about. I wondered about that. <laughs> I got um, Larry and I got a little creative, so even though he wasn't going to be here, so we came Friday night and made sure it would do what I wanted it to do, and. Uh, not officially, but indirectly. Yeah. 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 Thank you. 
morning. I hope you are all well and enjoying this break in the weather. Yeah, I never remember that. I'll get there eventually. This break in the weather, it's so nice to walk out and not feel like you're getting smacked in the face with the humidity. Um, it has been a very busy week for me and for my family as we did get. My dad is now settled in Greene County at Renaissance Assisted Living. The first day there, uh, of course, we, we endured the move. That was the first challenge. Um, he had a storage unit that really had most of the stuff had been in there for 12 years. Lots and lots of pictures. And I'm not talking four by six nice little pictures. No, these are all framed big pictures that I now have the task of going through and getting delivered to the people who are in them. I've already told my sons we're having a picture party. If you're in it, if you know anybody in it, it is now yours. It's You're not leaving without it. But it is. I, I have pictures of nieces and nephews and cousins. And why do I have all these big? Anyway, life is good. We got his furniture moved. We had a lot of great help from my dad's home church and got here right as we got to Renaissance. It and unloaded. It poured rain on us. But at that point, we were hot and miserable. So kind of was a little bit, it's okay, rain on me. Indeed. Um, he came Friday. And so he's, um, Friday was anxious time for him. And I got lots of phone calls. He even remembered how to text all of a sudden. He seemed to have forgotten that. But now that he wants me. <laughs> um, yesterday, we went, when Gabe got here, we went to see him and took a few other things that I keep finding things that I know he needs. Um, and he's doing, doing well. A little, you know, a little confused just because things are different, but um, he seems happy to be here. And I know the Lord is working with us through that. Thursday, there is a United Methodist men's meeting at 630 here at Madison. So if you are part of that group or would like to be or interested in what's going on, please come out. 
I'm not aware of any other announcements. Do we have? Yes, my mother-in-law, um, she fell on Thursday. She is 109 months. She broke her hip and they're not going to plan any surgery or anything. Right now they're keeping her comfortable in the bed in the hospital. And we should learn more as the week progresses and see how she's doing. She is very strong in her faith, very strong in her health generally. Um, she is, you know, she has no heart issues, no diabetes, no cholesterol. We should all be so blessed. She has had osteoporosis for quite a few years. So it's amazing that this is her first broken bone ever, but please keep her in your prayers and, you know, the Lord will decide what needs to happen next. Oh yes. Please show the name tags. All right. Oh, yes. Evelyn has a card for Betsy. If you would like to sign that, she will send that off. Um, I've talked to her a couple times via email and um, she was had asked that I wait a few, couple of weeks, let her get well settled. Um, so I hope to get down to see her soon and I can report back on that as well. I am now that I'm here on a regular basis. I feel like it's been like, whew. please, anyone that you knew would like, you know, needs a visit, let me know if there's somebody you want to go with me to visit. That is great. But, you know, I, I would like to be able to reach out to those who can't come here on a regular basis and those who are part of our family. So just let me know and I will work on getting that scheduled. All right, let's begin our worship service.
Thank you. That was beautiful. People need the Lord. It is a beautiful and great day to worship together. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We're going to begin our worship service today with our call to worship found in your bulletin. If you will please stand and join me. Long ago, a vineyard was planted, the ground was prepared, and all was made ready. What happened in that place of promise? Let us again turn to the Lord, who will again plant, prune, and cause us to grow in faithfulness. Let us open our hearts to God, trusting in God's ways and God's word. Amen. If you will turn in your hymnal to number 577, God of grace and God of glory, 577. and join us join me in our opening prayer holy god you offer such goodness to us you give us so much blessing us with resources that many go without despite your goodness humanity has collectively <clears throat> selfishly taking what we can get using it for our own gain and not thinking of the consequences forgive us for producing rotten fruit when you've given us everything we need so that all people can thrive. May we learn to be more like you, bringing forth goodness and care so that good fruit may come to the world. Amen. Glory be to the Father. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 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 Please be seated.
Good morning. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voices but your own, so that we may hear your word and also do what you have commanded. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading. Okay. Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah. Um, chapter 5, verses 1 through 7, and that can be found on page 634 of our Madison Bible and 776 of the Rose Park Bible. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. The Song of the Unfruitful Vineyard. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do with my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Our epistle reading is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29 through chapter 12, verse 2. And that can be found on page 226 of the Madison Bible and 274 of the Rose Park Bible. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell, fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had re received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release, in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. May God bless all who hear these readings. Thank you. This morning, I wanna share an idea with you for our children's time. And because we are all children of some fashion, some age, some place in our lives. I want you to imagine a minute walking into this area and there's this huge building 
And on this front of the building, there are all these, there's signs, there are neon lights, things to grab our attention. And if we were in our younger years, it might have been things like arcades, bounce houses, dirt bikes, all kinds of things, anything that would make us go, oh, I want to go in there. And the best part is, it's all free. Oh my goodness, we're going to be rushed into those doors, right? Can't wait to go in. And it looks beautiful. And we open the door and we walk in this space and realize that it's only that facade, only that wall with the signs and the windows and the glowing lights. Once we're inside, we see there are other two that come in. We're looking around at each other, not knowing why we're here or what we're going to do. Because there's nothing, just the ground. Kind of like imagine a movie set where you only have the fronts of the building. Hmm. We're going to consider those ideas today as we look at how we perceive things. What do we see? Is it only on the surface? Or are we digging much deeper? So as we go through our time together today, Think about that image of all those things to invite us in. And what's in there when we get there? Let us pray. Dear Lord, sometimes we get so caught up in what it, things appear to be, yet when we get there, we realize it's not all that was promised. It's, there seems to be a major piece missing. It's not about the lights, not about the signs. Help us to see past those symbols and to what's really important. Be with us as we study your word today. Amen. Birthdays. Do we have any birthdays or anniversary celebrations we need to lift up this morning? Ooh. I have a bio whatever stuff. Just turning six or Well, that's an exciting age. <laughs> it is. Six years old. What's his name? Tom. Okay, any other birthdays or anniversaries, special days? I would count my dad's moving as a celebration. It's a new time for him, a new start in a new place. So certainly lifting that up. Are we ready for a happy birthday? All right. <laughs> This morning, our gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 12, verses 49 through 56. Make that sit up. Beginning in, and these are found in your pew Bible, sorry, on page 75 for Madison and page 92 for Rose Park. I came to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her mother and daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Interesting words. We go on to read the interpreting of time. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the West, you immediately say, it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the South wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? So again, about perception, how we see things. The word of God for the people of God. When I first moved to the Piedmont area of Virginia about 10 years ago, we had lived in Virginia for a long time, but always mostly 
in the Hampton Roads area. We were told when we got here that this particular area of Virginia is blessed with great growing conditions for grapes. And as I drive around the beautiful area in which we live, I view the stunning grapevines everywhere, it seems, growing. Dr. Reverend Dr. Kevin Smalls describes vineyards as such. They are aesthetically beautiful places. They have beautiful greenery, well manicured lawns and rows of grapevines. They are exquisite and breathtaking. The rolling hills are marvelous to see. We see those images all around us. In biblical days, a vineyard was a prized possession. They were well taken care of and actually took a great deal to care for them, just as it does today. There was always the nurturing of the grapes or whatever fruit was featured. This tending to the vineyard was all orchestrated for one thing, one purpose, grapes, fresh, whole, round, perfect grapes. Workers in the vineyard were meticulous and detailed in their care. However, in our passage today from Isaiah, we hear of grapes gone wild. And there seems to be no excuse for these wild grapes. I mean, we've all seen gardens and yards and vineyards and farms that are left unattended. We understand things grow up and go crazy, but that's not the case here. These grapes, they've been watered. They've been given good shade so as not to be parched by the sun. And they've been given the best environment for growth. So it doesn't seem to be adding up. Why has God's, God's vineyard, a beautiful masterpiece, somehow led to the production of wild grapes? Grapes that are not sufficient, healthy, or wholesome for their intended use. So let's step back for a minute. We're gonna take about a look about how plants grow. I have a great interest in looking at plants and some of the crazy places in which I find them growing. This past spring, I went on a trip with a friend and we did some hiking in Blowing Rock, North Carolina. We went up to Grandfather's Mountain and we're a couple of science teachers, you know, so we've got, I've got my app out. We're identifying all the plants. People are walking around us on the trails going, what are they looking at now? But it was all good. We had a good time and we saw lots of things. But the most amazing thing to me is when I find plants growing in these unusual places, out of a rock, out of, off the side of a mountain, this way, when you would think they would be this way. And I wonder how these plants could survive when my own efforts in raising the same plant in a much more hospitable environment fails. No matter what I do and how I read, oh, you're supposed to do this and you should do this, the plant dies. But here's the same plant growing at a weird angle with nobody taking care of it. Nobody comes and waters. It's amazing to me. In Matthew 13, we read, the story of scattering the seeds, where some seeds fall on the rocks, some on the walkway, and some on fertile soil. In verse 8, we read, other seeds fell on good soil and bore fruit. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1. In another case, a yield of 60 to 1. Or even a yield of 30 to 1. Plants. And what grows? Interesting how we get so many ideas. And the story we heard in Isaiah this morning would not be the last time that God was disappointed by fruit. There is an interesting story in Mark chapter 11 that you might recall. It happens just after Jesus has been, visited the temple and became very discouraged, very upset by the money changers and the power mongers and all the robbers, he called them and clears the temple. And his disciples aren't quite sure what to make of all this. And so they're walking along and he sees off in the distance, a fig tree, a fig tree that looked like it should be ready for the picking. But as they approach, they realize there is no fruit 
on this tree. Now, Jesus was seemingly angry and even cursed the tree for false advertising, kind of like my building this morning. The tree was presenting an appearance that didn't match its reality. And this was, he was using this as a teaching moment to help his disciples understand what they had just witnessed when Jesus cleared the temple. It is not just that be, the behavior in the temple was wrong and in need of changes. Jesus was sharing and announcing prophetic judgment on the temple and its purpose. He knows that not only will the temple practices not be corrected, but the temple is also going to be destroyed. As they continue moving around town, they pass the tree again. And they notice the disciples, look, the tree has withered. The leaves have all dried up. And Jesus explains this to his disciples. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things, he asked? Truly, I tell you, not one stone will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. And the prophet Jeremiah, whom Jesus quotes as he cleanses the temple, has this to say about God's coming judgment. I will take away their harvest, declares the Lord. There will be no grapes on the vine, no figs on the tree, and their leaves will wither. What I have given them will be taken from them. Jeremiah 8, verse 13. Now, these words are all very harsh sounding. We think and we, we celebrate God's love and Jesus coming to help us. Yet there are those times when we need to look at and accept and be ready to admit our own shortcomings. Jeremiah's words were being played out on a real fig tree and on the nation of Israel as the kingdom of God was now going to be opened to every nation. And his spirit poured out on everyone who would come to him, Jews, Gentiles, the unclean, the diseased, the outcast, any who were ready to open themselves and hear and respond to the word of God. This too was a lesson. And sometimes those lessons we need to hear step on our toes and make us uncomfortable. But you may be saying, well, that was a long time ago and we've got beautiful vineyards and what's the problem? How does this story relate to us today? Yes, indeed, we have beautiful vineyards dotting our landscape. But we can't get caught up in the symbol of the story and forget to look at the deeper meaning. Today's lesson, it's not about grapes. It's not about figs. They are simply symbols to help us see the big picture. Today, we might want to connect those, the idea of the vineyard and the buildings that we see with the temple. Think of those great buildings among us today, those Big churches in some cases, sanctuaries with beautiful lighting and technology packages, and even cafes so that you can come and be entertained and enjoy. And yeah, some of God's words might seep in, but it's more about the experience. Maybe a movie in a mill kind of attitude. And the visuals can be breathtaking and clearly the buildings are well cared for. Many flock to the doors, but they find trees full of leaves that by appearance should seem ready for the harvest, but the fruit is not there. This world, as we read and see evidence each and every day, we're still struggling with issues. Sadly, the very same issues that Jesus came to fix when he walked among us. Oppression, illness, racism, discrimination. Those in power whose power gets out of control, the power mongers. And that list could go on and on. 
And we might wonder, well, how can this be with so many vineyards in our midst? Think back to that, those vineyards with the grapes gone wild. They've been watered. They've been nourished. Everything is right except the fruit. Jesus came to lift up the least among us. He didn't hang out in the temples, but among the people in need. Could it be that too many of our churches are producing wild grapes? Now, there's a way to fix this. There's a formula for getting it all corrected. It's the same formula that's always been there. Repentance. The lack of repentance will prompt God to remove the workers in the vineyards, dismantle the vineyards, and let the people have their way. This, of course, many means that there will be scorching heat, weather, and lack of nourishment that will cause great suffering and despair. Now, it's important to say that there's nothing wrong with great vineyards. There's nothing wrong with those beautiful churches and those places we gather. It's okay to have beautiful, luscious leaves, but that is only a little bit, a tiny bit, of what it means to be a people of God. Without the fruit, does a beautiful plant matter? When I walk out into my garden, I want to see tomatoes growing and ripening in the sun. I don't want to care to see a six foot tall tomato plant with only beautiful leaves. It's not what its purpose is. Is it too late? Can we still fix this? The good news is that God gives us every opportunity, everything we need so that we can address these grapes gone wild. We must return to Jesus. When he shared his opening sermon in Nazareth, he read from this very book that we read this morning, Isaiah. And once the scroll was rolled up, he began to announce that the day was at hand when God would finally get what God wanted for those who were oppressed, those who were outcast, the least of these. God would be the one to complete it by lifting those who had been pushed down in the mud of life. Now, sadly, this kind of sermon can anger a church. It can anger God's people. It can step on too many toes. And in fact, that very sermon initiated the plot of the Pharisees to kill Jesus. Just those early stages. Wait a minute, who are we looking at? Who is he? We don't want those ideas planted. We want to have power. We want to do things the way we want to do them. Nevertheless, this message was begin the beginning of Jesus, our Messiah's ministry. And again, not within the temples, but among the people, wherever they were. Likewise, Jesus comes to find us wherever we are. And he doesn't want to see a tree full of beautiful leaves with no fruit. We are flawed and we must admit our shortcomings. We have to repent of our sins. Jesus is ready, waiting for us to forgive us and lift us up so that we can become the beings that God placed within us. I want us to remember how we started this morning's message. I want you to close your eyes for a moment and visualize as you listen to the words so eloquently penned by Dr. Small. Just for a moment. Vineyards are aesthetically beautiful places. They have beautiful greenery, well-manicured lawns, and rows of grapevines. They are exquisite and breathtaking. The rolling hills are marvelous to see. Open your eyes, look around us. What does God see in our presence? Where are we? Do we hide behind a beautiful facade or are we out in the trenches presenting God's word to the lost and to the needy? Let us pray. Oh God, we are such fickle people. It is easy for us to greedily accept your blessings in times of peace and to cry for mercy in times of challenge and difficulty. 
We want to be your special people. And we don't always like the idea that you might intend care for those whom we would reject. We once again need to be reminded of the many ways which we have chosen to be the wild grapes rather than the faithful vines. We have been given opportunity time and time again to serve you by helping others. Today we have gathered in worship to praise you and to offer our gifts. But it is our commitment to a life of service that you would appreciate. Witness and service are not always easy. Sometimes we are ridiculed. Sometimes we feel uncomfortable. Sometimes we are required to sacrifice. But you call us to be faithful, to be steadfast. Help us, O oh Lord, to make those commitments which will bring healing and hope in this troubled world in which we live. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This morning I chose two different songs and I I guess apologize, but no, I don't because they are both very relevant to our service today. This first one you might be a little familiar with. You might have heard if you don't have one of the little song sheets, raise your hand and we'll get one to you. It is on page, well, it's on the front page where it says, make me a servant. This first time, we're going to sing it through two times. First time, just do it gently, let, letting the words immerse into your thoughts, okay? Make me a serpent, humble and meek. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be. Make me a serpent, make me a servant make me a servant today one more time this time let it work through you a servant humble and meek lord let me lift up those who servant make me a servant make me a servant today at this time we're going to respond further by reading responsibly the words in our bulletin if you will please stand and join with me our news feeds are overwhelmed with articles about natural disasters, fire, war, mental Ill illness, racial violence, and the list goes on and on and on. Why do these things happen, God? We try to do the right thing, yet the bad things still happen. We try to nurture the seeds of the plants, but we burn them on the forest. There are no easy answers to these questions. All we know is that we are called to continue the work so that what is rotten may become fertilizer for something new. God reminds us that you are with us in all things. You are a God of seasons, of beginnings and endings. Despite the changes all around us, you are steadfast. Thank you, God, for letting us live at these service to you. Thank you for holding space for us to share our grievances. Even though tragedy continues, we are grateful for the peace we know in your presence. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we are going to go to our prayers, times of prayer lifting up. Certainly, my mother in law, whose name is Joyce, Joyce Petrie. My dad, as he transitions, but other names that we need to lift up. 
We have, based on conversation and administrative council, I've minimized the names in our prayer list, but it doesn't mean that we don't want to include names of those who need to be there. So if there are names missing, please look them up now or share them with me and they will be placed on our list. But all are lifted up and God hears all of our prayers. <clears throat> We should have prayers for students and teachers. Indeed, students and teachers. And it's weird because it kind of almost slipped my mind in my retirement. It's like, oh yeah, they're all going back to school. So far, it's really good. I don't, I'm okay. <laughs> but yes, students and teachers, and you are a blessing and will continue to be to all that you lead. All right, let us go to our Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving Lord, we come to you with prayers on our hearts. There are so many in need, so many who are still suffering and struggling. COVID still seems to be just right around the corner and people are getting sick. Be with all those that we have lifted up this morning, those who are on our prayer list, those who we continually lift up to you, our doctors, our nurses, our first responders who go out and work even when they're tired, even when they don't know what they're going to face next. They work to help your children. Be with our teachers as they go back to school. Be with all those in our school systems who work to give our children a safe place to learn and to grow. Be with our missionaries as they go around the world, reaching out to those who still live in darkness. Their lives are filled with danger, but they are also filled with such blessings. Be with our military and their families as they are separated while they work to provide that justice and work to help people around the world. Be with all of those who work to share with others their gifts, their service. Help us to find a way to make those wild grapes come back to be good grapes for all to receive. We ask all these things in the name of your son who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I would ask the ushers to come up.
Help us. We must surrender all we have, all we are to you. With our surrendering, we gain eternal life. Take these offerings which we have given today so that others may learn of your gracious love and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to have you sit for this final hymn. This hymn is an interesting, I came across it unexpectedly. By accident, I guess. A few. It was early in the pandemic and we were having a conference-wide Zoom thing, a sort of worship service, honestly. And so I joined on, it was when I was doing school from home virtually, and it was like my lunchtime, so okay, I can get on there and watch this for a bit. And somehow I ended up on this other link part of the time, I think there was a mix-up with the links, and I discovered this song. And we're going to use it in a little bit different way, and I do, I, I knew... Um, that I was stretching us a bit by including two new songs in the same service. But sometimes we need to be stretched and shaken. And it's funny because after I was talking about visual displays and things, it's not passed by me, but yes, I'm using a visual display today. So um, it's all good. And it was, I could have done this song in many different ways, but I came across this video of these children singing this song. And it is so real. I mean, it's it, when you watch it, I mean, I've watched it several times now because it just makes me smile. There's a little girl in there at one point. She's, you know, here they are making this big video and she's trying not to yawn. <laughs> and there's another time where other things are going on. They're children. And it is a very diverse group of children. There's actually, you don't get to see it except at the very beginning, you realize there's an adult choir behind them. And there's actually a string ensemble in front of them. So it's very beautifully done. So we're going to learn to sing this song, and we're only really going to sing the first three lines. The rest of it, we're going to watch and listen them to do, them do their things, but it comes back about five times, the surely it is God who saves me. I'm going to just let you hear the tune so it's not foreign. So this is just the melody. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. It's a very easy tune, but it kind of gets stuck in my head from time to time. And it came back to me this week as I was preparing our message as God was speaking to me. The other night? You got it. Oh, you got it on. Okay, so I just need to change screens. For those of you who didn't meet him, this is my oldest son, Gabe, who's here today. And a blessing, we managed to get my Mustang back up and running. But, what do you mean I can't minimize it? I can change screens. All right. You see the right screen now? Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you. 
blessed by all that we heard and saw such a such a joy to watch as they shared with us and another time we'll learn the other parts but for today I was happy if we could learn those three lines they are powerful powerful words plant us again in your vineyard O Lord Help us to grow in our witness and service to you by serving others. May your peace always be with us. Amen. Match what a string choir and all that stuff does just on a piano. I think it was, yeah. She's going to make me find it. Yeah, I'm going to Google it. Yeah, she worked with it. You live in black. Christian's worked technically, but I worked with tech, so. 
I lived there many, many years ago. We live in Christiansburg, and actually, we're slightly closer to Red than we are to Blacksburg. Yeah. Okay. Well, not not really worked on it, but uh, at some point I helped manage the food trucks that Virginia Tech Dining has, and Google had a project that was drone based deliveries. I wonder if that's where you were going. So at some point they were using food deliveries as their guinea pigs, and uh, we, we went down there and got a little bit of a tour, just just onto the first stretch of the, the smart room. Uh, it's been a couple of years ago at this point. And that company has split from Google and they're doing drone deliveries there in, in Christiansburg these days. So. You work in the I do. I'm a director, so I run the, the large dining well, You guys are very proud of the food down there. We I'm are. My right? um, son just finished in June. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. So we're we're a self-operated, you know, very, very large self-operated dining service. So it's definitely our calling card that we do things the right way despite how big we are. Yeah. I will volunteer her, but okay. she she would know better than I. I, I would eat Oprah, but okay. uh, Karen, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, that's not right. Okay. So, I will I will find out. Yeah, Master Cream is a kind of uh, mild, like the premiere of wax peppers. And they just kind of kiss it. Oh, yeah, it got, it got hot and they went crazy. And I was doing peppers there. Okay. Saute them, put them on the salad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't bring my green beans. This is my perfect yeah, well, I work there too, so uh, yeah. Yeah. Next Monday, move in starts tomorrow for first year. Yeah, transfers and returning students move in later this week. Yeah, doing all instead of orientation during the summer, they do is welcome to the new model we're trying. We got our work cut out for No, I'm working in dining, so food services, but I'm a director of one of the large dining facilities. You guys were Yeah, I'm, I'm the oldest. <laughs> 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 
Mom grew the big ass. Oh, you're size? Yeah. 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 I, I think I'm technically the tallest. Uh, not, not by much. We're all three pretty tall guys. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Come back to your seat. It's a good experience, though. Come back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey. Yeah, that wasn't me at all. <laughs>